Welcome to the concept of the No Input Mixer. This app from Igor Vasiliev simulates a traditional audio amplifier with preamp, effects loop and output stages. Now conventionally an input is fed to the preamp which amplifies it to line level and adds filtering and EQ. Then optionally passes through some effects into a power amp to output to speakers. Now in this case we don't have an input but the output of the preamp is connected back to its own input instead. So this creates a positive feedback loop and all the tiny electronic noise artifacts and glitches get amplified generally producing that fairly recognizable runaway screeching sound. Something like that. But if we finesse that feedback by tweaking the preamp settings we'll discover a whole complex world of structure. So let's have a look at the app. I think this is the most useful opening view because it shows we have not one but seven independent preamps and one output stage. That's this over here on the right. These are numbered one to seven. That looks like a zero on the output stage, but that's an O, I believe. So we've got seven independent preamps. That's why it's called a mixer, obviously. So we've got individual level sliders on each channel and a bunch of other controls. I'm going to say channel and preamp interchangeably, by the way, so they're not separate things in case you get confused. These numbers, by the way, don't appear by default. You have to go to the app settings and toggle that option on. You see they've disappeared there. Let's go back. It's, it's helpful to have those on. So this shows all the channels together like a regular mixer. But if we click on this tab up here at the top right where it says multi, it toggles us into an expanded view that shows a single channel and the output stage side by side. Now this isn't very clear. The output stage is the these three columns on the right hand side. And the preamp settings for this channel are the four columns on the left. It probably would have helped if these were different colours or something, although we do have these labels, so the channel number there and the O for output there. We can still change the channel we're looking at by clicking on these channel selectors at the left hand side. We also have the slider, the level sliders there as well, just as a, an extra. So this screen shows everything we can tweak for any given preamp. I'll just quickly zip through these settings for now and point them out. Um, first we choose the input, this is confusing, the input selector. Now of course <laughs> we've said we don't have any inputs per se. What this actually does is we're choosing where to pick up the output of the preamp to, to then feed back to its input. And there's various different places we can pick it up. So this is Igor's block diagram from the, the help page. If I just show it to you in the help page actually. If you scroll down, there it is. It's also in there's a PDF file of this help page somewhere, which you can get as well. And you can look at that, study that. You probably should study that block diagram. Keep going back to it um, as you get familiar with the app to get a grasp of the subtleties of the routing. The routing is very potentially very complex in this app, but it's also very key to getting complicated and interesting effects. So back to choosing the input. Uh, I'm just going to choose this one that says INS Pre for now and explain that in a little while. So we have a level control for the, the selected preamp here and we can also pan it left and right there. And if I just leave this running with this generating a little bit of sound so it's not too overpowering. We've also got a gain control for the input that allows us to overdrive the input. And that, you can see that already gives us some variation in the, the sound that we get out of there. We've got a noise control that lets us inject our own noise as well. Again, we've already been um, changing the quality of the output sound. We can select what kind of noise we inject in there as well. And you can see each of these has its own has its own texture. It's quite an interesting one. We've got two knobs here, uh, labeled limit, so it's a limiter and an overprotection circuit. I'm not going to explain what these are in any detail. Your Google's as good as mine. 
but you can just treat them as tweaks really and see how they affect the sound. So you can see, bring that back up, having some effect. You can read about these in the help file manual. Um, now, you know, Igor does come in for a bit of flack with his manuals. I will continue to point out that he actually writes manuals. Many of these app producers don't. As you get up to speed, you'll find that as you go back and read that over and over again, you, you will find that the detail becomes a little bit more clear. So it's a good, it's a good reference is what I'm saying. So limit and overprotection. You can just treat those as tweaks. Uh, they do something, you'll figure out what they do. Likewise, these rather uh, anonymous selectors here and here. This is, I understand, the type of vacuum tube that the amp is based on. And this is the particular amplifier circuit or integrated circuit, which presumably each of these brings its own quality of noise artifacts to the mix and therefore affects the quality of the sounds that we might discover. So we've got filter and EQ controls here. These are relatively conventional. I'm not sure what shell filter is, but if you go click that, you've got high and low cutoff. They behave pretty much as you would expect. So if you put the high cut all the way left, low cut all the way right, you're not filtering anything out. pass filter, high pass filter, that's what those things do and that filter and EQ by the way is just to remind you is for the output of the preamp stage. You notice that over here on the output, this is the final output right before we push it out to the speakers if you like, we've got similar EQ and filter controls and we've also got a reverb over there and a, a sort of master level control. Um, I'm going to skip these last three controls under the banners of Send and EFX for now. Come back to them in a little while. And likewise on the output, we've got three similar controls labelled rather enigmatically Return rather than Send and EFX. Now if we flip back to the Mixer page, so remember we're looking at one preamp here, we're looking at all of them together here. All that information we've just locked out for each channel is available from this screen as well you just have to dig for it so if you click on the column heading you can see the missing amp settings so we've got the tube type the amplifier circuit type we've got the noise gain limit over protection we can get the EQ settings by clicking the EQ button so it's all available from here now there's a third display we haven't seen yet which we can get to by clicking where it says mixer up here at the top right and this toggles from the mixer to a eight slot effects rack. And we can also get that from the single channel display by clicking in the same place. It's a different word there, unfortunately. That's uh, not particularly intuitive. Now you'll notice that effects rack is kind of parallel to the mixer rack and it is set up by default so that it's convenient to apply a single inline effect, what's traditionally called, I think, an insert effect to each channel. So if you look at FX1 here, that purple slider labelled Presence actually appears on the detailed channel page for channel 1. Uh, here, it's, this looks different, it's a dial here, but you see it's set about halfway there. And if we go back to there, it's about halfway. If we put it all the way to the top, it's now maxed out on the detailed channel display. So it's the same control. So it kind of looks like that effect one is hardwired into channel one. And you can use it that way, but it's not actually strictly correct. You, we can root that effect or you make use of that effect in different ways. You'll notice, by the way, there are eight effects uh, and only seven channels. So number eight is applied to the output, which is why on the output screen here, it says EFX8 and that presence slider we should find has tweaked slider number eight on the effects rack. Okay, let's get on and make some sound just to make sure we reset everything. We'll go to the presets, we'll go to init and set. I think, I think we're already there. So we'll focus on a single channel for now. Just to emphasize that we'll mute all the other ones. And for input, we're gonna choose inspree. Now, what does that mean? 
let's go to the detailed view. Ins pre is taking the it's basically the simplest feedback loop we can do. It's taking the preamp output at the first opportunity notionally before we would have any insert effect. That's what the INS. So even if we had this effect set up for that channel, the feedback loop doesn't include whatever that effect does to the signal. So we already will get some feedback. If I bring up the level slider and you know initially we get that fairly obnoxious screech. If we push it further, something starts to break down and self-oscillate and we get more complexity. And so we can hand it left and right. Um, and of course we get transient um, changes depending on how quickly we move that slider. And sometimes if we let go and let it settle, it will change. That's fairly stable. So. So that's fairly boring, but we can do things already to make it more interesting. If we bump up the gain and overdrive that input essentially, again we get that breakdown effect pretty quickly. And the interaction between just these two sliders is already quite complex. Push that even further. It's not particularly mega interesting, but it's doing something. Um, if we bump up the noise, put it all the way. Uh, it seems to have stopped there, but it's um, it's mixing that noise in in some sense with whatever is being fed to the input. And then we can change these limit and over protection sliders. If we um, change the noise to a different kind of noise, what you'll find is actually, generally speaking, the, the type of noise changes the kind of tone of the output. This Geiger noise introduces some, I'm not really sure, some sort of uh, random noise, I suppose. It introduces some kind of movement. And you see again that kind of fairly um, unpredictable stuff in your which is quite helpful. One of the slight... Um, well, it's not really a criticism, but one of the things that it, we, it would be nice to have would be automation of some of these sliders to move them up and down gradually. You can do that by going into the app settings and, and MIDI. Everything's MIDI mappable. Um, I might do that towards the end just so we can um, get a look at that. So, uh, what else can we do to change that tone? We can change the tube type. Tube, it's the linear or saturated mode of the amplifier, whatever that means. The filtering, you know, again, high pass and low pass. Uh, I found that setting this filter to a notch or to pass is actually quite, gives some quite interesting results. Again, if you could animate that slider with an LFO, that would be kind of more dynamic. It's still a little bit dull at the moment. Let's look at how we can spice that up by adding an effect, an insert effect, to this channel, channel one. And we do that by going to the mixer channel. Uh, now, to although this is kind of hardwired in by default. You have to go here to the effect slot for effect number one. You've got to tweak the routing with these two buttons here. So the input wants to come from channel one as an insert effect. In, ins. Take, it, take my word for it, that's what you need to select. Output, we, we don't have to select any output. And the output of this goes straight into the general mix and out the other end. I'll try and keep it low so we can kind of hear it as we tweak. Choose a type of effect. So we'll choose the one that's going to be easy to spot. Flanging is quite easy to spot. We'll put the depth up to maximum. 
rate to minimum so it'll be very slow flangy and we have to put the presence slider at non-zero put it all the way up well something's happening it's not particularly flange worthy but uh, let's try done there is we've added the effects but the effect is not being part of the feedback loop uh, so what's happening is the feedback is happening in the boring way as we looked at earlier but the effect is being then stuck on the end as it heads out to the um, downstream processing let's say and it's already added a little bit of interest but what's really interesting is if we change where we pick up that output signal to feedback we can pick it up after the insert effect which which is this ins post. Uh, so if I let it run, and then you can hear the difference as I switch over to that. Something changed there. And now we'll find that if we play with these other controls, we're getting different, qualitatively very different kind of effects. We're going to change the um, kind of effect we've got on there again. Let's put the flange in on again. So that's the simple way to add an effect, an insert effect, to a single channel. Now then, what if you wanted to add multiple effects to that channel? You can do it. Let's look at how to add multiple effects in parallel. So at the moment, what have we got? We've got chorus effect on there. Let's say we want to use EFX slot 2. Instead of using it as an insert effect for channel 2, we want to use it as a parallel, I guess, effect for channel 1. How do we do that? Now it's a little bit more complicated to do that. We have to use these other controls labeled send and return. Now this is this terminology is if you're not familiar with the world of amplifiers and mixers, which which I wasn't, this is kind of confusing, but you can Google this and figure out what's happening. Basically, as I understand it, you have this idea of a send and return loop, if you like. Uh, now the idea is you send a signal out and that goes to an effect and then it returns into the amplifier circuitry if you like by a return part of the send return loop i think that's the right kind of terminology so how do we do it we um what do we do let's see we we want to send that signal out into the ether where it can be hooked up to an effect now to send it out we tweak the we've got two different send effect loops which are independent um, so we'll use send send one for now um, so we can tweak it here or in the multiple display we've got it at the top so we'll send 100% of whatever's happening on that preamp output onto the send return loop 1 we go to the effect for now for effect 1 which is currently the chorus effect we're going to change it from being an insert effect to an insert effect on send loop 1 so the input is send loop 1 uh, the output now, I don't think it works if you leave the output at none. You have to select the sort of complementary part of that send return loop, which is return one. So it comes in on send one, goes out on return one. And then if we bump that up, so we'll just play that. And we should hear that. It should sound more or less the same as what we had when it was an insert effect. Famous last words. <laughs> Right, okay. 
the missing step there. Okay, so that, that effect is now happening way downstream. If you look at the block diagram again, that effect is happening downstream of where we're picking up the output of the preamp that's, that's generating the feedback loop. Oh, I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. Um, what we need to do is change where we pick up the output from to be the output of that send return loop. And then hopefully we get that effect mixed back into the feedback loop. Let's see. to the presence slider. Let's try a different effect. Right, the bit crush one is much more obvious. It's obvious, more obvious now that that is being fed into the feedback loop. So that's the first effect. We're looking to put in two parallel effects here. Don't forget. So let's see for effect two. We'll do the same thing with the routing. So we take the input from send one and we'll send the output to return one. We could use the, the second send return loop for this, but we won't do that. Let's temporarily bypass that first effect so we can hear the impact of the second one. Well, we'll leave it that form and filter. So if we unbypass the other one, we should get the bit crush back in as well. Right, that's the bit crush. Performant effect. <laughs> Let's change that to be something else. Alright, so we go. So we've got two effects at once in parallel. <laughs> Let's turn on some reverb actually. Now there is a way to add two effects in, or more than two, in a series. If you want to do that, go back to, we'll set up that first one as an insert effect again, picking it up post insert. So the effect is mixed into the feedback loop. So we have to go back to the EFX1. We have to change the routing. So in is insert effect, out is non. So it goes to the mix bus. We go to EFX2. Now instead of taking it from send what we have to, um, by the way, yeah, that send parameter is now, doesn't have any meaning. So second effect routing there is an option there which is input from previous effect. So it's going to pick up the output from effect one as the input to this. The output of this, again, I don't think this goes to the general mix. Let's just, let's try that. If we put none, I think we have to set that to return one, but we'll try it. So we've got that first effect, which is a bit crush. That should go into the flanger. Doesn't seem to be affecting the output. Just bypass that first one. So actually, maybe that routing you do have to choose return one, and then we have to pick up the feedback from the return bus rather than from immediately after the insert effect. Yeah. So that's definitely showing the flanging. which is chained on the end of the bit crush, which is currently bypassed, but if we put that on, bit crushing, then it's flanging. That's quite nice, actually. So really, you know, the essence of what makes this app complex, complicated, is right there. It's that routing of you know, if I'm, I'm just saying all this, but unless you've got that block diagram in front of you and looking at the different points where the output from the preamp is picked up to feed back to, it, to its input, it's really hard to keep it all in your head. I mean, there is an argument for just pushing the buttons and tweaking, but it does help if you've got some rudimentary understanding of things like the routing 
I won't go much further. I mean, obviously you can set all this up on more than one channel and particularly with this send and return routing, what isn't perhaps obvious is when you send out your signal on send one, it's called a bus, Igor calls it a bus, send one bus. And then if you did that from another channel, those go into the same bus. So those get mixed together. And then if you've got effects on that send return loop, those effects both get, get applied to that mixed stream. So already the complexity has gone up probably exponentially just by adding those two channels together. And if you add further channels, I mean, just the, the potential for unpredictability is massively multiplied at each step. So that's, that's the beauty of this really. But I'm not going to set up more than one channel. What I am going to do is just, I'm just going to show you two other things which are slightly interesting. Um, I've got this set up in AUM and so it's nice to just pipe the output of this into something else. And I've got other desert cities loaded just because it's a nice sort of d demented delay <laughs> effect. Like that one. If you leave that running, just go back in here and tweak. And the last thing I'm going to do, just because I mentioned it earlier, I've got MIDI LFOs loaded here. I've got one LFO set up just to control, I think it's that filter slider. If I just kick that in, if I put it on a a sign on a fairly, I mean, it's unrealistically fast LFO there. Let's slow it down a bit. You can see that's having some dyna dynamism. Interesting to put that on a sample and hold. Um, so it kind of randomizes the position of that slider over time. And of course you can do, you can animate all these other sliders and controls as well. That's just one simple animation. Um, and there it is. So that's um, quick orientation with the no input mixer from Igor Vasiliev. Hopefully you found that interesting, maybe even educational. So keep on tweaking and uh, be interesting to, to see what people come up with.